Uh, all right, so I'm, I'm, I kind of like combo mirrors in sort of a weird sort of way because there's a lot of um, well, a lot of crazy things can happen. Yeah, but which side do you actually like more? Because I think that's always been a debate in, in Legacy whether you want to be on the Storm side or the show and tell side. And so, I, I honestly think it's very slightly favored for sneak and show but it's like 55 45 and really whoever has the better hand is a massive favorite yeah i definitely agree um because that was also my gut feeling that i'd rather be on the side that has forceful and uh, uh i guess both of a quick kill especially uh, the epic storm but i just feel safer being on on uh, patrick dickman's side here uh, on the other hand, from what we've seen from Romario's deck, he also has discard and two surgical extractions in the sideboard. And as we've seen in the previous match, Patrick is somewhat vulnerable to that. So, well, also, yeah. Patrick has been vulnerable to drawing very, very poorly as well. I think. <laughs> um, an interesting thing to note is that if Romario has Xanted Swarm post board, it's actually quite good in this matchup. Oh, yeah. Uh, what what can happen in those scenarios is Dickman casts show and tell. Romario just puts in Xanon Swarm, untaps, attacks, and kills him. Yeah, so Dickman should definitely make sure to to be able to kill Romario and not pass the turn post show and tell. So technically, post board, would you go for a blind show and tell on, on the second turn? But I guess it depends on the pattern of the hand if you're drawing to something. Yeah, I, I would just look at my hand and try to figure out if I can afford to wait. Yeah. And then even and, if you put in Grizzlebrand, actually, if you put in Grizzlebrand, no, Romario doesn't, uh, uh, Patrick doesn't have a way to remove the Scented Storm, I think. I guess technically you could draw into two Lotus Petals and a card that he probably wouldn't bring in, Sudden Shock. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, not going to bring in Sudden Shock. That, for his Scented Swarm, that's just so... Yeah. But um, here, the hand, Romario's on the play, and I think you keep this hand. It's... Um... It's pretty good. The probe gives you information about how fast you have to try to kill. Yeah. And uh, let's see, what's the best draw in the deck for Romario? It would actually be Lion's Eye Diamond, I think. If you do the math, uh, probe, probe. Yeah, you can go for Ignosium here. Uh, three, four, one, seven. Two, three. Yeah. Yeah. If you draw exactly Lion's Eye Diamond, Oh, but this is actually a quite very, very strong good. mulligan to six for Patrick, I think, until Mario finds cable therapy. Yeah. Dickman's, so Mario's... Dickman's mulligan hand is actually quite good, too. Like, after mulliganing, that is a pretty good hand. Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. I mean, he has probably took more mulligans than the rest of the league combined thus far. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry for yeah. that, but from what I've seen, the chat people are actively rooting against him, and I actually feel quite sorry for that. Yeah, I feel, feel pretty bad that he hasn't drawn slightly better. Yeah. So what is Romario looking to draw here? We mentioned he eventually is going to need... Well, he doesn't definitely need an LED. Maybe he's also going to get there once he draws a like, couple of other mana sources. But he really needs uh, cava therapy to get past those Forcifers. The thing about therapy is it's only going to clear out one force because I, I suspect Dickman would just force pitching Burden on Cabal yeah. Therapy. True. But if Dickman casts turn one preordain, actually, do you cast turn one preordain here? Because if you are forced to force, you're losing your show and tell, and that's like pretty bad for you. I don't know what he's cried into. That's actually my um, limiting factor. Oh, yeah, that okay. ponder was not good. Burning Wish, Burning Wish, and what was the last card? Mm, it was Lotus it, Petal. Petal? Yeah. Yeah. You don't need another pedal. You're really looking for an LED, I think. Oh, LED and a therapy. Ooh. Emrakul actually quite a strong draw. Yeah, and now I, I think you definitely period in because you're gonna find a here. A soul land, yeah. Um a soul land is just so good off the top. And if you draw a blue card, it's fine as well. And yeah, and he bottoms Forcefer and I guess he also bottom cunning wish. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So now if you draw Soul Land, it actually is just puts from Mario to two. <laughs> and then the thing is, Storm can actually win from those scenarios, which is kind of scary. 
You actually can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but then he can also hardcast Prosophils, which is like pretty good for, for him. Oh yeah, never mind. That that is a good point. Um, do you force your pitching omniscience? <sighs> Since he went bottom bottom in the preordains, I don't know. I guess you can because, yeah. Uh, I mean, you probably eventually have to do something about Romario and. It's a tough decision, I think I would, yeah, because you're pretty dependent yeah. on the Shonto. The, the, the Omniscience only slightly helps you as opposed to the Shonto, which is your game plan. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you're forced to uh, force pitching on, on yeah. me there, and Dickman obviously does it. I actually don't hate either player's position. Like, they're, I think they have a lot of live top decks. Yep. So, in general, like, what would you say is the reason they appeal to play the Epic Storm over the more common uh, Ad Nauseam Tendrils that we see a lot of tournaments? So, the there's a few things. The Epic Storm is actually a better Ad Nauseam deck. It has less expensive cards in it and has three Chrome oh. Oaks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry wow. for interrupting you, but yeah. <laughs> That's a huge top deck. I think we just... We just... Whoa. But yeah, but now he's cold to... He's afraid of dying, I guess. Apparently. Huh. That's an interesting so play. Huh. All right. So, remember, Dickman's operating blind here because there's no Gitaxian probes in his deck. Romario knows there's still one more force left in Dickman's hand, so he can't really do anything. Huh. So now do you cast it having drawn the spell pierce? I yeah, think you have to. Definitely. He's exactly at 15 as well. How convenient. <laughs> Very convenient. So, yeah, Romario is so not... Now Romario is going to have to, you know, do something. Yeah, but that's not... I don't think his hand can get past this force of will. No. The Unless Patrick piece. thinks that he, he needs to pierce one of the rituals, which is sometimes the right play, but since Romario has another initial mana source and colored sources, mm -hmm. it's definitely not the correct play. I think Romario is going to die to get when his Infernal Tutor mm -hmm. gets countered. Yeah. But unfortunately, this, this is the right play for him because he has no other options. So the only thing I could have seen Romario do, but that's like... A corner case scenario is like not play the second land on the previous turn and then when he goes for the kill on this turn he just t uses underground sea to cast dark ritual and hopes that patrick is gonna spell pierce the dark or force fulfill the dark ritual right but overall he's probably just like hoping that patrick didn't draw another, draw another blue source or another blue card yep. and as we see he did and emrakul is gonna take down his board his life yep. total and he's going to die with zero cards. Yeah, but uh, Romario was very, very close to just killing Dickman there. Any discard spell wins the game on the spot. Yeah. So what is he going to bring in? I think he, since he's got so much discard, he's going to bring in the two Surgicals, which can also, well, it depends. Yeah. Like, since deck lists are known, he knows that Patrick also has two spell pieces, and I think this is a fluster storm on the sideboard. Because, like, you can kind of... Build your own discard spell by using surgical on a force of fill if that's that's been one used earlier in the game or discarded. Yeah. yeah, sort of as a weird sort of cabal therapy on the key turn. Definitely think that'll happen. Yeah. So we don't have Santid Swarms in the sideboard, right? Oh, I didn't see any, no. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. No, no Xantid Swarms. Uh there is a second no. Oh, he's got basic island, a chrome mox. Yeah. Yeah, there's no Xanted Swarm. Never mind. I think that is a pretty potent card in the matchup, but... Yeah. And I think the bounce spells aren't worth it here. Like, you'd rather have the acceleration, and once you get to a point where you need to use the bounce spells, you're probably losing anyways. Like, there's no point in bouncing a sneak attack. When the opponent already like technically you could bounce it when the opponent goes for it and has a grizzle brand in play and responds to drawing the cards. When he doesn't have red mana, you could bounce it, but that's like so bad. <laughs> you don't want to be in that position. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not a storm expert, but it looks like Romario took out Empty the Warrens 
and one other card for two surgicals. The thing is, I sort of think leaving an empty is okay, especially if you flash back all of your therapies to turn you empty. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, as I said, I don't know enough about the deck to uh, be confident that that's like a reasonable plan. Because you do want the turn you go off to basically kill them or effectively kill them. Yeah. I mean, on the other side, Patrick can also Cunning Wish into Kozilex return if he has the mana, making that like not the best kind of plan, especially if he hides the Cunning Wish on top of the Brainstorm or something. Yeah, if he's got just, the awareness to do yeah. that. I understand what you're talking about. I think that's just uh, it's not going to be a good plan. Yeah, it's definitely yes. not a plan. But it always feels like weird to bring in um, MT against combo decks. I don't know. Yeah, it, it sort of depends on the scenario you're in. But if the chip shot, chip shot damage is good and you think of all therapies that are important, then it's good. This is this is an interesting can from Mario. It's three disruption spells and four mana sources. Do you keep? Oh, I think I do keep. And you lead with Doris, and if need be, you could even Kaiba Therapy in the first turn, which you yeah. don't really want to do because you don't have a lot of mana. But if the hand presents itself in a way that you want to do, like I could see him t using Doris to take the brainstorm here and then Kaiba Therapy. Hmm. Maybe even Grizzlebrand, because next turn your Kaiba Therapy is going to get spray pierced. Yep. Interesting, you Morgan. Um, I, I don't know whether or not you're supposed to keep or mulligan that hand. Mainly because the problem is I don't think you progress your game plan. But I think once you've mulliganed that hand, you're supposed to keep this one. Yeah. Uh, any, any fetch makes this hand reasonable. And it does, it still has a turn one discard spell. Unfortunately, you're blind this time, so you have to guess. Uh, he scried into Delta, which is an excellent draw. Yeah, that's really good for him, yeah. So what is going on in Dickman's side? Dickman, he's... He, I think that must be one of the best hands he has had this tournament, uh, which doesn't really say much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, Dickman did win last game. His hand was quite good after he mulliganed. That's true. Maybe he should mulligan even therapy. more. What do you name here if you're uh, Romario? <sighs> I mean, he, he ca can he go off next turn? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can make goblins next turn, so you could name Force of Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, if you want to play a longer game, you could even name Bra Actually, but you don't have creatures to flashback the therapy, so yeah. naming Brainstorm isn't as good. I think Force of is pretty straightforward here. I mean, he sees think... that he can't go off in the face of Spray Pierce next turn, but mm -hmm. if Dickman didn't have the Spray Pierce, he could make a lot of goblins. The, the thing is, I think, basically, by that point, you're forced into naming a four of from uh, Dickman's deck. You just kind of have to choose which four of. And I think naming force makes sense if your plan is to empty next turn. Yeah. Because all of your men are spoken for next turn as well. Wow, we peered in into the third Gristle brand. Fortunately, uh, Dickman gets to bottom that one. And I also don't think you re <clears throat> really want the Cunning Wish. The thing about Cunning Wish is if you draw another land, you can wish for Breach and hope that's good enough, but I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. It can also get Flusterstorm if something happens to the Spare Pierce. Yeah, he's tanking on this one. Yeah. Information is so valuable, and Dickman has no way of acquiring it from Romario's hand, unfortunately. Actually, now that you mentioned the breach plan, I don't hate keeping it. Like, you still need to draw another. Oh, yeah, but you're not. Yeah. Hmm. So, if your plan is breach, you probably have to play City of Traders next turn, which is always like, eh. Yep. And uh, Dickman plays this. Uh, well, just put all to leave up Spell Pierce. So Romario is looking to draw another discard spell or for enough mana to pay for the spell piece. Yeah, the problem with Empty, I think, is it doesn't really kill Dickman, right? Mm, it's, it should probably take like at least two turns. Oh boy, that is an awkward brainstorm. <laughs> 
I think it's actually okay since. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, no, you're going to reach all one of those lands for sure. Oh, you already played a land. Yeah, true. I think yeah. I wouldn't have played the Brainstorm at the order. It's super unlikely that he gets to go off here. Well, so I think he was trying to bait the spell Dickman piece into oh. using the spell pierce, which I think is a reasonable plan. But now that Dickman's drawn a forcible as well, he has to be feeling really good. Yeah. Like and we have plays, Pierce plus for Force sure. pitching maybe Brainstorm? Yeah, yeah. Or even Cunning Wish. Like, Dickman can brainstorm into a lot of things, like Show and Tell, even Sneaker. Actually, Sneaker Attack is a problem until you find another Black Source or, like, another land, which is not too unlikely. Yeah. End of turn. Do you think he's going to get through the breach here? I don't know. Really what else? Oh, intuition, actually. That also makes sense. And Romario, like, if Romario had Surgical, he would at least force um, uh, Patrick to to blow the Force of her. Uh, but we know that he's not going to draw one because he was semi brainstorm locked. So the question is do you cast intuition now and play your land? Or you just intuition EOT and then play your land on the next turn? Hmm. Hmm. These decisions look very innocuous, but they are very, they they matter. So what? What have, you mean? Cast intuition in the main phase? Yeah, and then play your land. But you net more mana if you don't play it. So yeah, I think I would just wait and cast at the end of turn. Yep. At some point, you might even wonder whether Romario. I th I think Romari doesn't have a discard on the sideboard because Romari could also get Burning Wish for a discard spell. But it's not like he knows about anything he really wants to discard. Like he knows that Patrick has a Grizzle Brand, but apparently no show and tell because that he would have cast for sure. Oh, and he goes all okay. in. What? Oh, okay, because he can pay for the spell piece that yep. you see. But that runs right into Force of Her. Well, the thing is, even if uh, Dickman didn't have Force, we could just intuition for three forces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, so I'm not really sure what the plan was there. Do you force pitch brainstorm? Or force pitch pierce? I think I might even pitch pierce. You, you go for the intuition, you find the show and tell... You put in Grizzly Brand next turn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it probably doesn't matter much. It doesn't really matter, but there's like corner cases where it could. But now Intuition's going to find three show and tells. Yeah. And did Romario actually? Oh, yeah, he played out the LED as well. Yeah, of course. So. Patrick has perfect information. He's he knows there's no surgical going on. He can safely get a Grizzle yep. Brand for three mana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grizzle Brand costs four and four black, but it just costs three. I always found it like weird how Grizzle Brand is like seven seven, and you pay seven life and you draw seven cards, but it costs eight. And I guess it makes sense because maybe seven really is like too easy to cast and I have no idea what the standard environment was like back then but yeah I'm going to be honest with you the standard environment had unburial rights in it but oh. it was so much better to unburial rights crater hoof behemoth oh people oh that was like the, the hoof there this deck yes oh I should have played yes, standard they... <laughs> uh, I mean I, I played that deck some but I think I won more with the Delver decks so does that sound familiar um, you don't strike me as a Deva player, but... <laughs> oh, when it's like could... a deck in standard, I'll just play anything, you know. Was it like the blue-white Deva deck uh, where you had the the equipment? I, by that point, I think I played Sword of Feast and Famine and Sword of War and Peace. Ah, okay, okay. I didn't play Rune Chander Spike, which is the one I think oh, you're thinking of. Oh, that's the one, of. yeah, yeah. All right. I just remember W and Q show and tell. Nick was in the top eight like eight times. <laughs> Omniscience. Yep. GG. Well, Romario kind of didn't draw well towards the end there. Yeah. Game one, he was one discard away from killing his opponent. 
but you know sometimes that's the breaks right <laughs> yeah i mean as i mentioned the first game i liked either player's position and fortunately for patrick things worked out better for him and romario now has to fight back and patrick has to hope that his one two is gonna be enough so yep. Patrick is rooting for Romari to lose uh, his re remaining two matches. Whereas if Romari wins, yeah, if he, if he wins two, he goes through. I think if Romari just wins a single match, mm -hmm. unless a player sweeps the group, he's going to be last because he lost to the other one-two guy. But we will see about that um, after the next couple of matches. Right. Yeah. That was a good match to watch, though. Yeah. I mean... I, it, the in the end, it... uh, post board, especially when one guy has a discard and another person doesn't, sort of a weird sort of boxing match at times. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it it looked like Romari didn't really get to do anything, but like the match was quite technical, at least from from uh, Patrick's side. Um, if you pitch the wrong card or make a couple of wrong decisions, things could definitely go Romario's way. And I'm sorry for, for uh, I think it was 677 who told me he actually skipped his uh, local legacy tournament to watch Romari play uh, the Epic Storm. I <laughs> oh, promise that geez. in the next two games, we will probably at least see a couple of goblin tokens or maybe even some angry tendrils of agony. <laughs> we don't know. We will see. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I kind of want to see, uh, see what Romario's deck is capable of. I'll be watching from the sidelines, of course, but... Yeah, the deck is known, as you mentioned, to be the, the best at Nauseam deck, and is definitely quite capable of a lot of explosive starts. Like, I've been on the wrong end of 16 goblins on the first turn way too many times. Mm -hmm. And it's not that hard for the deck, because uh, like the one of the key differences between the Epic Storm and at Nauseam Tendrils is the presence of Rite of Flame over Cabal Ritual, which is just mm -hmm. one mana instead of two. And even though Cabal Ritual provides you like a greater mana boost, Right, right of Flame usually comes down in the first turn, and that's also one of the reasons why Epic Storm players like, for example, most prominently Brian Cook, they play at BMP in the main deck. Because while they might not always get to a lethal tendrils, a lot of their opening hands are capable of producing like a two-digit amount of, of goblin tokens, which is also why the deck is known as the best goblin deck in format, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, I used to be a hardcore goblins player, but uh, really the past six years have not treated that deck well probably past seven years if you want to be honest yeah <laughs> goblins like a couple of friends of mine tried to revitalize the deck and they basically turned it into goblin with go yeah it's not goblin stompy even it's a regular goblin oh, deck but instead of red, uh, blood moon variant yeah you play four ancient tombs and um at certain points they even had four chalice in the sideboard so my friend, he used to play against Reanimator, and the Reanimator guy killed him on the second turn after he played first turn Goblin Lecky. And the second game, my friend of Goblins just goes, Ancient Tomb, Chalice, go. You're like, the fuck, are you, you're you supposed to be Goblins, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. yeah. All right. Well, so, I'm good to uh, log off now, but I look forward to watching the next match. It's going to yeah, be definitely. an exciting one, guys, so stay stay tuned for that. And I'm really looking forward to whichever great music Mike has planned for us during the next couple of minutes. <laughs> so see you later. See you.
Oh, I think we have to close the other kind of conversation. Otherwise, um, 